This is Land of Havilah, Psalm 19. It's 14 verses. It begins with several verses about the glorious appearance of the sky day and night and how that glory speaks of the glory of God. Verse 1. For the chief musician, a psalm by David, the heavens declare the glory of God. The expanse shows his handiwork. Day after day they pour out speech, and night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their voice has gone out through all the earth, their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of his room, like a strong man rejoicing to run his course. His going out is from the end of the heavens, his circuit to its ends. There is nothing hidden from its heat. Comment. When we see a great work of art, we marvel at the talent behind it. In verses 1 to 6, when we see the sky, we marvel at God. He's good at what he does and artful. The heavens declare his glory in verse 1. In verses 2 to 4, the sky speaks a universal language understood around the world. It speaks about God day after day and night after night. In verses 4 to 6, the sun courses across the sky from one end to the other in strength and rejoicing, shining on everything. It's a marvel. Now speaking of God's word with emphasis on the written word, verse 7, Yahweh's law is perfect, restoring the soul. Yahweh's testimony is sure, making wise the simple. Yahweh's precepts are right, rejoicing the heart. Yahweh's commandment is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. Yahweh's ordinances are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yes, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the extract of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Comment. The glories of the sky in verses 1 to 6 transition straight into the glory of God's word in verses 7 to 11. In fact, for someone with any insight and appreciation of his word, it's impossible to exaggerate the glory of his word, the way it illuminates everything in strength and rejoicing like the sun, its ever-changing glories like the sky from one glory to another. And switching to other metaphors in verse 10, his word is like gold and honey. In verse 11, as we course our way through this life, his word warns us, and in keeping it, there's great reward. Now, speaking of the person who's without the word for some reason, he's clueless. He has no idea when he's gone off course. Verse 12, who can discern his errors? Forgive me from hidden errors. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I'll be upright. I'll be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Yahweh, my rock and my redeemer. Comment in verse 12, who can discern his errors? By definition, a person doesn't fully realize his errors ahead of time or he wouldn't make them. In verse 13, there's great transgression and presumption, meaning in not realizing one's own errors. Please, Lord, let not our presumptions, our assumptions have dominion over us. Don't let us think the wrong thing and get in trouble over it. Let us not be wrong-headed. Straighten us out in our thinking, please. And how will God do that? According to His Word. We should learn it and meditate on it. He'll guide us in real time as He quickens His Word to us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Yahweh, my rock and my redeemer. Psalm 20 is next.